welcome back to another episode of Let's Go Flying. This is the I'm Building a Plane mini series and welcome to episode three and thank you if you stuck with me this far. Um, so things are going to be a little bit different moving on. I'm going to be uh, putting episodes together over a period of one, two or three build days so, so that obviously I'm not releasing episodes every day um, because that's a lot of editing. So uh, I'm going to pick up where I left off yesterday. Um, got plenty to do, obviously. I'm just going to crack on now, and uh, I think the first job is to finish off this main section. I have no idea. I'm going to go and consult with the manual now and figure out where I was up to and pick up where I left off. Right, it's starting to look a bit like a plane. Which one make sure you get the right, the smooth side of the the washer against the aluminium and the rough side against the bolt. It's just good practice. Okay, right, now then, so that's that. Oh wow. That looked extremely plainy when you did that. It did, didn't it, it? Yeah. Isn't it incredible how we're like two days in and it already looks so much like a plane? Um, a little bit. I mean, obviously, I want it to be bloody flying by now, but. <laughs> So what I've found is there's a couple of bolts um, which need Loctiting basically. And the reason for that is if you have a look like here, that bolt inside there, I mean it's covered by that tube so you'll never get to it later on to tighten it up. So I've just used a bit of common sense and done it now. Um, and this one as well down here. It's exactly the same. So I've painted them and marked that I have actually Loctited them up anyway, and uh, and that's that really. So kind of just learning as we're going on. Welcome back. Look at this. I've made a thing. Check that out. So it's come on quite a lot today, which I'm really pleased with. Um, one thing I will say is I have panicked slightly, which I'll show you. I've panicked slightly because I'm not entirely sure whether this main tube at the bottom is the right way around, which is a bit of a problem. Um, but if it's not, I'm pretty sure I can change it around in quite a short space of time. But yeah, so I've, I've sent uh, Paul Dewhurst a message and sent him some photos of the top and bottom. Um, and that's really the only thing is that tube. And then there was the other tube as well, uh, which I was confused about whether or not it was the right way around. But now it's up there. I suddenly realized that it is. Um, so that one's fine. But this bottom tube, I'm not wholly convinced is right. So hmm, we shall see, I guess. But that's enough for today. This is the culmination of what I've done in about a day and a half in total. Um, the parts are all organized a little bit better now too, which is good. Uh, and I've got a nice little working area set up over there. This thing's great, really good, magnetic. I mean, you just throw nuts and bolts into there. They don't bounce out. So if you need to put them down, put them into the tray and they're not gonna go anywhere. Uh, and Anna's back with a drink for me, so. Or did she forget the drink? No, she, she bought me a drink. Welcome back to I'm Building a Plane. Um, 
So this is day three now of actually building. Uh, I've uh, moved on to the next part. You can see where I left off yesterday. Um, so I've got the F1 qualifying on at the moment. Um, so this is where I'm up to at the moment. It's asked me to locate the two central cabin tubes, SKR19, onto the front vertical SKR14, which is this one. This is the front vertical. And these happen to be the SKR19 tubes. So I need to mount those, um, which I'll crack on with now. Today has been tough, like super tough. I really struggled to get this hooked up here. Now, uh, you see, I'm, I'm not sure whether this is right or wrong, but I found this easier um, putting this tube on first um, to then fit these onto here and then fit this section here which is part of the engine mount. Um, well, the engine mounts come on here, but this is the main tube that goes through the cabin. So um, it's been interesting to say the least, um, but it's coming on nicely anyway, I think. Uh, Organisation's been key. We've got everything. Um, how's it all set up, Anna? Um, parts are obvious over there. So obvious parts over here. And then we've got... Yeah. And there are parts that have no numbers and uh, the parts with no numbers. Left. And then the big poles in here. Um so we're getting there. Next job. I've just looked at this diagram. This is for the front engine frame. Um now this takes some getting your head around. <laughs> Um, this is going to be interesting. I'm just currently trying to fathom exactly how it all goes together at the front. So we shall see. Right, so this is the engine mount. So I'm just trying to fathom <laughs> uh, what, 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 space, what spaces and various bits and bobs go here. So uh, remove this washer. So no washer on this one, so we just need... And I also need that SKR310, which I know where that is, it's in there. It should be very easy to spot. So that's that there. So there's no nut, first of all, on this. It's about quarter past nine on a Friday evening, and I'm about to call it a day. This is what I've got up to. Um, here you go, as you can see. It's come on. Uh, it's uh, slow progress now. I'll admit that I've got a little bit stuck where I am currently. Um, a little bit confused with how the engine mounts work. And there's a part which is it's called SKR310, um, which I presume is this. It was actually unlabeled, so I'm a little bit confused because this is supposed to mount onto here. Uh, like... Like this, it's weird, but it's got to mount on backwards apparently because of the UK mod. So I just can't fathom how it goes on. Um, and then it's got this this little thing in it here, so this little bolt, and that's only a uh, a six mil hole, and that one's an eight mil hole. So I'm just completely and utterly baffled at the moment. Um, so I'm going to go home. And I'm going to tackle it with a clear head tomorrow. Uh, it's definitely getting harder. It's challenging, but not in an awful way. You know, I'm enjoying it. It's, it is a challenge. 
Um, it certainly isn't going together as quickly as I thought it would. Uh, but, you know, it's a, it's a funny one because you just got to find the way things go together. I mean, I've already got one casualty so far. Uh, I've managed to bend a, a bolt, but um, all should be fine, hopefully. But this is it so far. Welcome back to day four of the plane build. So, um, it's Saturday evening. Um, we're picking up from where we left off last night. This is how we left the plane. And this whole front section, I was really struggling with. Just struggling to get my head around it and how it all goes together. The diagram's um, quite intricate. So, let's see if we can get that sussed out. Right, where I was stuck on the engine mount on the front, let me just flip you guys around. Um, this was tricky. Getting the order right of all these here because the gaps are different on each side uh, because of obviously accounting for uh, extra metal in here and so on and so forth. Um, took a bit of getting the head around. I've still not tightened the bolts up yet. I can't bring myself to do it. Don't do what I did and forget to mount this little bracket here. I completely forgot. Um, and uh, I've still got to tighten these up. And then this has got to be drilled as well into here about five millimeters from the top of this plate. So uh, I don't want to get that wrong. Right, so now I've done this tricky bit. This was probably the, by far the trickiest bit I've done so far. Uh, it said that I've got to tighten these bolts up. Uh, starting with the triangulation tube bolts, which are these up here um, and down here. And then tightening up the actual engine mount bolts themselves as well. So, um, <sighs> All I can really do is, is crack on and get stuck in. I don't like tightening bolts, to be honest. But um, anyway, so I'm going to tighten this first. And then what we do, we mark the actual nut to say that it's been tightened uh, with a paint, uh, uh, paint pen, which we'll do afterwards. So we're only doing one, two, three, four, five. We're doing at this moment in time. And then obviously the three on the other side. So, okay. So we'll start with the triangulation tube, which is up here. Now, we want this gap to be between 175 and 180 mil when these are tightened up. So, uh, fingers crossed, that's how it pans out. And this one, you don't want to do up too tight that you can't move. SKR 310, which is the uh, little cross member. That's as tight as that's going for now. Now then, this gap needs to be between 150, sorry, 175 and 180 mil. <sighs> Ooh, it's too high. It's more up that way. It's 180 there. So that's right, but it comes out here. Update, um, the engine mounts are fitted. Only problem is, which I'll show you now, Get my tape measure. The gap between the end of these mounts should be between 175 and 180 mil. It's currently about 188. So I need to reduce that by about 10 mil to be comfortable. And how I do that, according to the manual, I add one and three millimeter spaces to the rear of 
the mounts and that should bring it closer together then i've got to bend this and mount this five mil from the edge of this mount here um and uh and then i've got to, i've got to drill a hole through this metal which will be fun i don't like drilling holes through things but other than that it's coming on nicely the next step in the build manual says that we fit the floor so I'm just having a bit of difficulty finding the floor in the box at the moment. I've looked in uh, in the guide here, where it tells you where everything is. There we go. So I've looked in the guide here and it says, uh, cabin floor in box seven. Anyway, I've had a look and I can't initially find it, which is a bit of a pain. But the time now, according to Accurist, well, according to me, Again, it's quarter past nine. It must be the time when I start getting tired and want it to go. So I'm gonna get some sleep shortly and then tackle it with a clear head tomorrow. One thing I have noticed is I was really struggling with the front end of this. I was really, really struggling um, yesterday. And I thought, right, I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna tackle it with a clear head. And the difference that made was just unbelievable. I came in today and Granted, last night I read ahead in the manual and I kind of had a picture of what I needed to do, but I came in and I just cracked on with it and got it done. So I'm really pleased about that because I was stressing out about it a little bit. Um, so it just goes to show, really, you just tackle it with a clear head and, a, and a logic and read ahead in the manual. Don't matter Paul too much <laughs> and all will be good. Uh, this will probably conclude this episode um, and then we'll pick up next time. So thank you for watching. Please do like, subscribe and share. Uh, it all makes a difference. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.